loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please pardon the crappy lighting because it is six o'clock. Well, technically 6.41 here in New Orleans. The sun is beginning to set. Things are starting to calm down. My lighting is also turning down for the night. That's usually how I am. I start lighting my candles. I start lighting my incense. I mean, technically I have incense burning all throughout the day and candles burning all throughout the day, but the vibe tends to change and I tend to change when the sun starts to go down. And that's where we're at right now. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Cancer Solar Eclipse, which I spent some time meditating on prior. But I do have some cards pulled I do have the astrology chart pulled and I'm going to share with you what it is that I see so the first thing that I want to talk about is number one these readings are general but across the board we're working with cancer and cancer no matter what your sign it rules something within your chart and I keep saying that again and again but it's because I want to inform and I want to educate the sign cancer rules something within your chart but in addition to that it wants to bring a sense of wholeness and completeness and family and safety and security and it want to make sh it wants to make sure that you feel safe and secure as you are with your own identity with knowing who it is that you are and the people that are around you cancer energy always wants to protect it always wants to hold and nurture and give you comfort so whatever that looks like for you and whatever that is ruling within your chart is what this solar eclipses energy is going to want to bring into your life and not only is it just for the moment but it's for the next six months and it creates this huge surge of energy for you wherever you are at that moment and you'll see that energy carry on for the weeks and the months to come so that's why the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse, which is going to happen right afterwards in the sign of uh, Capricorn, is so important to pay attention to. You want to check your chart and see what Cancer rules. And you also want to connect within yourself and connect with your own internal compass, your own um, internal guidance, your intuition, and ask yourself, what is it that I need in order to feel safe and stable? Am I being comforted? Am I being nurtured? Because how can I create external or material success when internally my roots are so shook up and the, the foundation that it is I'm standing on is so rocky? And that is so important for us to pay attention to and that's what we're going to highlight in this video. So the first thing that I... Well, the next thing that I want to talk about is how the, the planets that rule the foundation, the firm foundation, and the stability and the structure in our lives are currently retrograde. And also there's a lot of change and transformation that's happening around us. That is because Pluto is currently retrograde. Saturn is retrograde. Jupiter is retrograde. Neptune um, is currently retrograde. Mercury is soon going to be retrograde right after the eclipse. So it almost feels as though the ground that we're walking on, it's almost shaking. And that could be the foundation of anything. That could be the foundation of your relationships. It could be the foundation of your job. It could be your health. It could be your mental wellness. So when you start seeing the eclipse kind of highlighting things, and usually this is about planting seeds and starting to see the start of something. So it's normally not heightened and highlighted. That would happen more around the Capricorn eclipse, which is following shortly afterwards this is a little bit of okay this is what I'm seeing this is what it is that I'm feeling and I'm going to initiate into my life because the solar eclipse is all about infusing energy and sharing light here it's it's lighting it up in, in, in a way that it's not so obvious all the time although there can be events and circumstances that will pop up as new beginnings because that is the energy of the new moon for the most part after the 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 day of the new moon has passed and a solar eclipse is essentially a new moon on you know steroids it's totally heightened it's totally enhanced so how you can use this energy again is to connect within yourself and to ask yourself am i being nurtured am i being comforted do i feel safe do i love myself do i like myself the people that are around me do i like them do i want to share the the pieces of me with them the work that is that i'm doing is it giving to me am i receiving enough so there's a lot of questions, a lot of internal questions that you want to look at and you want to examine. And meanwhile, while you're asking those questions, Saturn and Pluto retrograde, they are working to 
outside of your intention, it's almost like circumstance, um, circumstances. The planets know what is in your highest and best interest. Well, technically, it's divine. Divine, The divine energy, this all-loving energy, knows what's in your highest and best interest. And it uses the planets to kind of target the weakened spots and to strengthen the spots that need to be strengthened. So when Pluto and Saturn are retrograde, basically what they're doing is it's looking at the foundation of whatever this thing is that's being highlighted at the time for you of the solar eclipse. So if this solar eclipse is happening in Cancer, which it is, directly opposite of that in Capricorn, because that's where Saturn and Pluto is moving, you are seeing some shakeups that have been happening for a while. So instead of you getting derailed, instead of you getting panicked, instead of you getting stressed out, you want to listen, you want to look, you want to observe, and you want to learn. While you're doing that, while you're listening, while you're looking, while you're observing, it is helping you to see what you need to set intention for in order to make sure that no matter what happens in the future and no matter what is happening, pre happening presently and no matter what has happened to you in the past, you are feeling safe and secure regardless. Let's say it's your relationships. Um, that are being broken down or restructured and that is a really important word to use Restructure why because Saturn rules structure and Saturn will break down and Pluto also will break down anything that is weakened That doesn't the planets or the divine doesn't see it lasting for the long haul Why the long haul well because Saturn and Pluto want to create positive transformation for forever for 30 years and then some so if it doesn't see that those those aspects that relationship your health your health choices your mindset your work ethic if it doesn't your friendships the way that you communicate if it's not going to pay off for the long haul it's going to come in it's going to shoot it down it's going to restructure and make it better by breaking it down first so that you can see that through this event through this circumstance this created a problem and we don't want to see that happen in the future. So instead of looking at that and being like, oh my God, why is this happening to me? You really do have to ask yourself, okay, what do I need to learn from this? Now, that being said, I am so seeing like karmic ties here. There are karmic ties that are being broken and I have been talking about this a lot on my YouTube channel lately about generational curses and gener generational habits. Things that you've learned that are passed on from generation to generation or some things that are just energy or blessings are passed on from generation to generation, generation to generation that you are now responsible for, whether you like it or not, for breaking and releasing yourself and freeing yourself from it so that you don't pass on that same energy to your offspring or you don't pass that energy on to your life and make your life toxic or destructive. You wanna make sure that the energy that you're bringing is always something that is healthy and that is helping you to thrive and helping you to have love and life and vitality and passion and peace within every aspect of your, anything that you touch, anything that you can experience. So I'm seeing a lot of you guys learning about boundaries. I'm not really sure why my camera's having a hard time focusing, but we're just gonna work with it. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of you guys learning how to work with boundaries and this is going to require a lot from you and of you and it, it, it requires you to be assertive. It requires you to be an advocate and a leader for yourself and also others who can't stand up for themselves. But at the same time, you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself and your own energy because it's not possible for you to save everybody. You have to make sure that you are doing all that you can to make sure that you are being nurtured, that you are being comforted, that you are being still safe as you are advocating, as you are creating change for yourself. Um, you don't want to turn into a victim of this energy. You don't want to get run over and then everyone else is passing past you because what good are you if you are depleted? What good are you if you are broken? What good are you are you if you are not nurtured, if you are not you know, taking in nutrients, that you're not healthy, that you're not strong? You can't save others if you yourself need saving. So that's what I'm seeing with Mercury and Mars. Mercury and Mercury is moving through the sign of Leo at the time of the solar eclipse. And Mars is just entering into the sign of Leo at the time of the solar eclipse. And this is again connecting to your heart, but not being a martyr, not being a victim, not you know, giving away your power and, and saying it like, oh, this is love. No, you love something, you give to it, but you don't kill yourself over it because that's not love for others that's not lo love for yourself 
and the divine would never ask that of you so i'm seeing this kind of like battle i'm being honest with you guys because i'm looking at the chart and i feel like people are highlighting only one aspect of the solar eclipse and they're ignoring the other sides of the solar eclipse that can create problems and challenges but if you know what's going on if you know how to work with it then you can make it work for you versus against you what i'm seeing is when you hear and when you experience words or information or energy that pushes back and it feels violent or is violating you in any way shape or form or you see within yourself traits that violate your own self then you need to cut that cord and it's time to protect yourself it's time to make sure that you are being nurtured and comforted and that you are not one of your own worst enemies and that you're not allowing anybody else to be your own worst enemy. For some of you guys, you've been in relationships or situationships, I should say, where you just have been almost like a slave to them. You've been a slave to the thought of them, to the memory of them, to the past and what things were like and they're no longer that. And instead of being in a space where you free yourself and you open yourself up to experience new love and you're opening yourself up to receive love and give love to yourself so that you can give it to others, instead of being open to that, you're almost latched on and locked on to them. Well, this, the solar eclipse is another thing in your life that is asking you to give yourself a chance and to free yourself from that because you have been depleted and dried out in that situation for far too long and the universe and the divine is wanting to give to you and nurture you and put sus sustenance and love and nurturing to your body, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. So that's what I'm seeing. That's some aspects of what it is that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of karma, but just because it's karma or just because there's this really strong soul connection does not mean that you need to stay in a space where you are engaging it and enabling it. A, a part of karma is you taking the scissors and you taking the cord and you cutting yourself and releasing yourself from this toxic behavior, from this toxic mindset, from this toxic living situation. One way of doing that is through intention. One way of doing that is through your mind, through your words, and the thought that is that you think. If you decide for yourself that you want to value yourself and you want to make sure that you're safe and secure, then your mind aligns with what your body and your soul and your spirit and your heart have been asking for all along and your actions now because your mind is directing the ship the mind is now directing where it is that you go now you can move forward in a different direction that's when the chariot starts moving forward that's when you're moving from your heart and you're moving with direction away from the things that no longer serve you um, and I'm, I'm seeing with intention, when we say intention, when I say intention, what I'm talking about is the power of your mind, the power of your words, and the power of your focus to help direct you as a vessel and where it is that you're going ultimately because you are being called for something bigger and better for you. Now, the solar eclipse is again so much focused on the energy of the sun. The sun gives us life. It gives us vitality, it gives us energy, it gives us vibrant, this vibrant, um, vib vibrant essence, it gives us creativity, it gives us love, it gives us pleasure, it gives us, gives us, gives us joy, and these are things that I'm seeing being activated for each and every single one of us. Some of you guys, it's with your family, some of you guys, it's with your home, some of you guys, it's the home is where the heart is, so it's the things that it is that you love. Some of you guys, it's your purpose and the legacy that it is that you are going to, to leave. And for some of you guys, it's your health. It's making sure that you are healthy and vibrant and, again, strong. It almost is It's like you guys could be eating a lot of food, but that food that you're eating is not nourishing you and it's not nurturing you. You're eating, you're taking in all of these calories, but it's empty. And that is a reflection of what's going on internally. So it's time for you to give to yourself and not only give to yourself junk, but give to yourself nutrients, give to yourself things that are of value, that are of substance, so that you can be a person of substance and a value and that you are of service to others and your purpose, your movement, your, your momentum is something of value versus it being aimless and directionless. Um, with, when it comes to relationships and pleasure and joy, some of you guys are being called to stop entertaining these uh, connections that do not serve you. Like, it's more than it doesn't serve you. It's so, 
you know, base level. It's so surface level and you want so much more for yourself, but be, while en you're entertaining these superficial relationships, you have blocked something of substance or you yourself are so afraid of of wanting and asking for more because if I ask for more you might deny me or I mean I might be rejected or I'm vulnerable because the universe or circumstances or this person or whatever might not say that I'm worth it well, that's not the case the reality is, is that you are worth it the sp spirit knows that divine knows that you know that so much within you is calling you for something bigger and better than yourself because internally you know that you are worth more so at the time of the solar eclipse it's time for you to step into a space where you are creating the space for you to receive more that being said let's start pulling some of these cards because i've i've said a lot so much there's this first card that jumped out that says love yourself first it doesn't matter if you're in a relationship or if you're solo dolo you want to make sure that you are giving to yourself always cancer is about the home, the hearth, and the root. What the root looks like. If the root of a tree or if the root of a plant is not planted in a space that allows it to thrive, it simply will not thrive. It will not fruit. No matter how much you water it, no matter how much sunlight you give it, no matter how much you talk to it and pay attention to it, if the roots of that are not firm and do not support the growth of the plant, the plant will not grow. Opposite of Cancer is Capricorn. Capricorn natural, naturally rules the 10th house, the 10th house of material success and the legacy that it is that you want to, to, to leave. And this generation, like this, this um, career, this external, this value that is that you're leaving on the, on the outside. But if the internal is not strong, the external can never be strong because the internal, the, the external will never be supported by a weak root, a weak foundation. So Cancer is that foundation. Cancer energy, the solar eclipse, asks you to pull in energy and to respect yourself and to do all that you can in order to nurture yourself and to give yourself self-respect and to give, give yourself a chance. That way it's not just this shell. That way it's not just this, okay, vision or I'm painting my face but internally I feel rotten. No, make sure that internally you are feeling respected, you are feeling valued, you know your worth, you know how much you are loved, you are loving yourself. The actions that you take are a reflection of how much you love yourself and how much you value yourself. That is going to give you total serenity. That was a word that came out is serenity. I'm seeing you guys learning a lot. So I'm seeing the book, the clover, and the fire. You, there's a lot that it is that you're learning and gaining and it's, it's almost like if you pull away from the rest of the world, I think I saw the hermit, yes I did. It's almost as if you pull away from the rest of the world and you stop, stop striving and pushing and forcing. When you shine a light on internal situations, like when you ask yourself, okay, why, do I, why am I doing this? Why, why is this my way? Why did I say that? Why did I react in that way? Why is my guard up? When you start shining a light on that, you'll start seeing, okay, well, in that moment, I felt threatened. In that moment, I felt like I wasn't going to be provided for. In that moment, I didn't feel safe. And that's what the hermit, the energy of the hermit brings. It shows you that when you shine that light, light, sun, solar eclipse, when you shine that light, you will be blessed by what it is that you find, that knowledge that it is that you find that you discover about yourself. I want you guys to listen to that. I want you to listen to spirit. I want you to listen to yourself. Before you set intention, ask. Communicate with spirit. Ask spirit. Ask yourself. Ask, ask internally. What do I need? What do I need right now? And if you are honest with yourself, that's when you have the key in your hands. For some of you guys, you have been independent for a really long time. You say to yourself, I'm independent because I don't need anybody because I'm strong. Having people around you does not mean that you can't do it yourself. Having people around you shows how strong you are um, because your core group around you is someone who is equally as strong as you are and you guys can rely on each other and build from each other so that you can do less, gain more. So remove this space of, oh, I'm independent. Oh, I'm gonna do this by myself. I'm gonna tackle this obstacle and I'm not gonna ask anybody to be a part you know, to, to walk beside me while I'm doing this because I can do it by myself and blah, blah, blah. No, some of you guys need to see that it is good and right and a blessing to have intimacy, to have people around you that support you and love you. And that is going to give you serenity. That is what creates a home. That's what creates family. That's what creates bonds. 
Now, you guys are probably like, well, Jess, the hermit crap or the her hermit card is all about being alone. No, it's not. It's about taking the light, the solar eclipse, the energy of the sun, and shining it so that you can see, so that you can learn what is going to help you to feel secure and stable within yourself so that you know that you are supported. And some of that support is going to come from external things, people, places, situations, jobs, health, food, diet, lifestyle, that is going to remind you of your value and not leave you out in the cold. The five of pentacles is the person or the people that have either been abandoned by the tribe or abandoned by situations or they decided for themselves, I'm gonna do this myself. Well, you do it on, by yourself and you rely on just your resources and that's, at the end of the day, that's all you have. Sometimes it is good to connect with others and it's time for you guys to listen. It's time for you guys to connect. It's time for you to be of service. That's one thing that I'm seeing too is um i'm seeing some of you stepping away from like i say all that but and then i'm gonna say this some of you guys are stepping away from constantly being of service to others and always being there and always being available and it's almost like you are someone else's rock but if that is depleting you again boundaries <laughs> And I know that that sounds wild because I just spent all this time telling you like how important it is to connect with others. But for some of you guys, you are someone's everything. You are always that person that that person can count on. And that boundary needs to be put into place. And that is going to give you life and vitality once again so that you are not being drained. There is an abundance that it is that you have around you. There is an abundance that it is that you're setting intention for. And people around you could potentially be taking and pulling from the trees. Let's say you have a garden that you've been investing your energy and like toiling over and sweating over and it's growing, right? And it has berries in it. People are coming in and picking those berries before they have time to ripen. Or people are coming in and taking those berries before you have time to feed yourself and to feed your family. So not only do you not have nourishment after all of the work that is that you put in, but you are bitter, you are weak, and everybody else is benefiting from it and you're feeling like, wow, all that work for nothing and I actually feel like shit after all of that. Versus if you're able to receive and to, to get nourishment, it feels better to share it with the people that is that you love and you can enjoy it. it. I just feel like it's so important for me to say to you guys that it's not your responsibility to save everyone. Cancer energy does have this tendency sometimes to be an advocate and a leader and to nurture and take in everyone and everything, but it's like a person who hoards cats or hoards dogs or hoards animals. You know, it's good to have one, two, or three, or four animals or however many to the point where it's manageable for you, but you can't give each of those animals all of your love. And if you don't have the resources to provide for it, then those animals are actually worst off. It doesn't matter how much you love and care about them. You have to do what is right for you and ultimately what is in your resources to give and then create a boundary and say, okay, no more cats. <laughs> That's a weird metaphor, but it really does make sense. And I've seen you guys starting to cut off some of those stray cats that are just walking around and meowing in the middle of the night, calling out and calling out. Like, you gotta stop. Number one, I gotta sleep. Number two, I've got a purpose. And number three, you have to go somewhere else. Like, you have to find another home. Stop nurturing and feeding these stray animals. <laughs> and those stray animals could literally be people in your life or whatever. So, boundaries, yeah. And, um, the last thing that I want to say is having gratitude, humility, and I don't know why the word is acceptance. So it's seeing the blessings that are around you and accepting it and saying thank you. Simply enough, I almost feel like spirit is like, when was the last time you gave us credit for the gifts that it, that it is that we've given you already? We have been of service to you and we want to give you more, but it almost feels impossible for it to give you more when what it is that you have now, you just experience, you're looking at and you're seeing just lack. The reality is, is that there is a lot of abundance around you. So um, yeah, I just see a space of saying thank you and sharing that and sharing that that spirit of gratitude with others sharing that spirit of gratitude with yourself giving yourself a chance and also beginning to build that foundation for yourself that structure for yourself uh, so that's what i'm seeing for the solar eclipse you guys i hope that this message hit you with perfect timing that it resonated and that you take with it all that you can so that you can nurture yourself i will be nurturing myself um, some of you guys need some sleep and some food and some quiet and to listen. 
less less acting, more listening. The full moon, the solar, the, the lunar eclipse is a chance that's going to be following up right after the solar eclipse. That is a chance for there's going to be more activity, more action. But with the solar eclipse, I'm seeing a lot of listening and paying attention, looking at the signs, calling things in after you've connected with yourself and you know finally what is that you need. That's when you put things into action. That's when you set things into motion. If there's something that you've been wanting to put out there, like a job offer or a, a resume, or something like that or a new beginning that it is that you want to, to, to start then this is a great time for that um, and also the, the, the lunar eclipse stay open to the signs and what's going on around you because the solar eclipse will bring you know things coming in really really fast I want you guys to listen a lot and receive a lot so that you can have serenity so that you can have peace with the decisions that, is that, that you're making and don't be afraid to create boundaries all right so that's all for now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. Leave your experiences down in the comments. Yes, I read all of them. And um, I'll see you in my next video. Make sure that you're subscribed so that you see my next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.